I'm doing you right, baby. When I'm doing you right, yeah. I bought you a car, house, and a diamond ring, and you left me left. I haven't done a thing. I wanna know how can you do me wrong when I'm doing you right. Tell me, baby. I wanna know how. Oh, I wanna know how. Can you do me wrong? Oh, baby, baby. When I'm doing you right. Oh, yeah. When I'm doing you right. I work the full time job. All that job. This is the Ghetto Free Press, and I'm George Boston Rhymes. Isn't it amazing that the Quitman 10 Plus 2 Lula Smart have had a court date, a court date set, and that court date was for the 19th of August 2014. And do you not know that in South Georgia and the state of Georgia, that no real news media coverage has been on this particular case dealing with Lula Smart. One of the 10, then the 12. Outstanding citizens in Brooks County who was brought up on charges of alleged voter fraud in a very high profile case here in the state of Georgia. But do you not know that after eight days of preliminaries and jury selection and the jury process and actual hearing and the testifying of witnesses that the Valdosta Daily Times, the local South Georgia news media network and other news media networks has acted as if though this case never took place. And so I wanted to share with you, all military veterans, active duty, retired disabled military veterans, ask yourself a question, how could it be that a court case of this magnitude could be ignored by the local press say in the state of Georgia. It reminds me of the old 1860 charter that was displayed on the second floor of Valdosta City Hall leading into Judge Edwards' courtroom. Uh, and it, was, it remained there until I petitioned them to remove it. And it was reluctantly, and I do mean reluctantly, removed. Here is what that disgraceful charter said. And the reason I'm reading, let me repeat, the reason I'm reading it is because it seemed as if though there has been an asserted effort to keep the people in Georgia and the United States of America ignorant concerning a very high-profile voting rights case that should have been at 
Eric Holder's office and on his desk with major priority, but we don't read nothing about that. Anyway, back on point. This Valdosta 1860 Charter, which had been displayed in Valdosta City Hall up until I had questioned it, here's what it said. Article 100, Section 11, that the mayor and council shall pass all proper and necessary laws and ordinances for the control of slaves and free persons of color in said town and suppress and abate all nuances arriving from hogs, dogs, horses, or other livestock strand at large in Valdosta or from other causes. This is what this disgraceful charter had displayed. Now it seems as if though that charter was removed. However, the mentality of that charter seemed to be alive and well. We the people had better wake up here in the state of Georgia, in South Georgia, and across the United States of America. We are rapidly losing this republic. Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press. I'm George Balsarain. The Lula Smart case in Brooks County, Georgia. That court case will continue Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. Be there and not elsewhere. I am following this case. The Honorable Judge Gary McCorvey is presiding, and I must say that he's doing an outstanding and thorough job. He is the best, I think, professional attorney that I have seen in some time here in South Georgia under the Southern Judiciary. Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press reporting what others ignore. George Balsterang in America's Georgia. In America's Georgia. But I will be back in the South, South, South Georgia area on Tuesday for the purpose of reporting more about what has become the biggest whiteout, a blackout, and disgraceful act in the state of Georgia, perhaps, when it comes down to the freedom of the American people to know what is happening in their community. Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press saying to you, bye-bye, we're gone. And remember, the Lula Smart case continues Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. Be there and not elsewhere. I've been coming down here for the last four years, familiarizing myself with this case against these 11 women and one man of the very apparent injustice of this matter. This has been orchestrated from the highest levels of this state Secretary of State has a vendetta against these upstanding citizens and is trying to suppress the African American vote, not only here in Quitman, in Brooks County, but across the entire southern band of counties in Georgia. Greetings. Today is the 12th day of the Lula Smart alleged voter fraud case that took place in Brooks County, Georgia. And as you know, not a single newspaper reporter, not a single radio reporter, not a single television station has covered a single day concerning this highly publicized profile case that deals with voting rights here in the state of Georgia. And it is amazing to some as we listen to the questions from people that come from Macon and Atlanta to witness this third trial by Miss Lula Smart, or rather she is the victim of Georgia State allegations by District Attorney David Miller, Secretary of State Brian P. Kemp, the GBIs, and Governor Nathan Deal. After all, it was Nathan Deal who removed 
members from the Bruce County Board of Education that was part of the Quitman 10 plus 2. Many people are amazed at how could they have a voting rights case with little to no news media coverage. Listen, I'm not going to talk about Quitman anymore. I want to share with you a couple years ago when I was called to a little town in Willacoochee, Georgia. And I want you to listen to what took place in Willacoochee, Georgia. And be advised that press releases were sent out to news media. But guess what? They did not show up. No, 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 no. They did not show up for whatever reason. But the ghetto free press was there. The ghetto free press did not want history buried, lost, or covered up forever. So listen to what the NAACP is saying about voting rights and dealing with the black African-American people. And once again, Eric Holder of the Justice Department. The National Democratic Party, the State Democratic Party, all must be on guard and they must come and review the foundation of these 12 outstanding citizens in Quitman and put the puzzle back together, if it ever was. Once again, Willacoochee, Georgia, they called me just like they did the other news media outlets. They waited on the other news media, and Bobby Worthy said, hey, let's get this press conference on the way. Brother Rhymes is here. He is the press. So let's go. And I did it. And because I recorded, guess what? This history was not lost. And what did the Secretary of State, Brian P. Kemp, say about this? Listen, please. CP and other concerned citizens in this community tell you their stories because they know more about it than I do. Go ahead. My name is Reverend Larry O'Hara from the Georgia State Conference of the NAACP. I'm here on the behalf of, of uh, Mr. Hall. We have a clear case of voter fraud in Willacoochee, Georgia. Number one. Mr. Lay Fudge alleged that paid individuals to vote for him. And you know clearly that's against the law. Number two, Mr. Lay Fudge allegedly had individuals from Coffee County and Pearson, Georgia, to come over and vote for him in the city of Willie Tucci. Number three, there are allegations that persons from Pearson, the neighboring city of Willie Tucci, voted in the election. from Coffee County, the neighboring county, come over and vote at a city election in Willacoochee. How can that be done? This is America. America, the country that I fought 22 years in the military for, and I went for that flag over there, and then I come over here in America, and I got to come right back here and fight again in the United States of America. This is not a white America. This is not a black America. When you say that you're American, you don't say you're black American, or you don't say you're white American. You don't even say that you're Mexican American, but you say that you are an American, and that's what you are. And Americans have a right. So let's stand up for our rights. Let's vote for our rights. But the late fun should be in jail for one concern. The NAACP want to bring this out to everyone, not just in Willacoochee, not just in the state of Georgia, but all over the United States of America. Not South America. United States of America. Things like that is not supposed to happen here. That is why we do what we do. The NAACP is here for right, American rights. It don't matter who you are or where you come from. Here in Willacoochee, you want to you want to fix that. We have we have our Lord and Savior that's above us, sitting up high and looking down low. Right now, we asking him to look down on Willacoochee. Here is Mr. J. Hall. Gary Hall. This is Mr. Gary Hall. Mr. Gary Hall ran for the mayor of the city of Willie Cooper. By right, he should be the mayor, but this voter fraud is holding him back. So now we got to go through all of these laws 
good ones and bad ones. Laws from maybe as far back as 1800. But we got to go through all of these laws, what we call red tape, to fix this map. Right now, let's hear from Mr. Hall. Uh, we'll go this is kvci.blogs.com. I'm in Willacoochee, Georgia again. Uh, I just had to go back because when we think about the country and the time in which we live, I just must get the feel of the sensation and vibrations in the state of Georgia in this particular area anyway. And so in doing that, I, I got to acknowledge the people who put their, themselves in, in the limelight and on the firing line as well. They use their blood, they use their own gas to travel back and forth. So first of all, uh, uh, District Coordinator Larry Lockett, could you just, well, just, I want all you presidents and former presidents that have served the NAACP, which is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, which was set up in 1909, not just by black folk, but by blacks, white, Jews, and others. So identify yourself starting over here in terms of who you are. Everybody give their name and give your position because you had thought enough to come today. Right. My name is Ernestine Thomas Clark, and I am the secretary for the Coffee County NAACP branch. We're 5184. Ernestine Thomas Clark, Coffee County branch, 5184. Reverend Ralph Smith, I'm with the Wake Cross branch, number 5244. Mm -hmm. President. President. Yes, sir. Reverend Larry O'Hara, district coordinator. This recorded made a 16 on the Georgia State Conference and NAACP. I'm Larry Lockie. I'm Georgia State Conference District 15 and 18 coordinator, and also I'm a member of the Wake Forest Grant NAACP and a live member. All right. Anybody else? My name is Gary Hall. I'm a member for Ike Mayor, and I also am the Ike President of the NAACP for Ike County. My name is Arthur Brown. I'm a branch of the Little Kitchen. I'm a member of the Little Kitchen. My name is Bobby Brown. I'm a member of the uh, Action Academy in Double Thank you, sir. And you're the best. Billy Hall. Remember the Action Academy in Double Thank you. Thank you very much. And once again, these are the freedom fighters of the civil rights movement of this era. And we have to understand that just because Dr. King left the scene and now we understand on his birthday, people in the community come out, uh, eat dinners and eat barbecue chicken and rolled up turtle eggs and talk about how good they are. But unless they are on the firing line, like these people are, your work and your time, in my most humble opinion, as a humble man is a waste of time. And now, my beautiful brother, give me your, 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 your final comments to all of this that's going on this afternoon. Before you give me your comment, I want to ask you a question. Was the media notified? Yes. Where are they? I don't know. Go ahead with make your point. Okay. Well, this is the end of the meeting. Uh, but I'm going to say this here. If you're not, you know there's strength that comes in numbers. It only takes one man to start a war. But it takes a whole, it takes more uh, to, to fight the battle. Yes, sir. Uh, so if you're not a member, yes, sir. <laughs> join up. Yes, sir. Um, you can't do nothing if you don't join. And that's it. This is kvci.blogspot.com. George Boston Rhymes out of Valdosta, Georgia, the county of Lowndes. And I want to see justice not only here in Willacoochee, I want to see it with the Quickman 10. I do not want, I do not want the work that Senator Brown did in Brooks County to be a waste. He committed himself to the equipment team along with Tyrone Brooks, Helen Butler, David Lucas, who served 37 years in the General Assembly, and others, even jo Reverend Joseph Lowry sent the People's Agenda Group to Brooks County, all in support of the equipment team. But the South Georgia news media ignored all the great visits and all the great work of these historic legends in our community. I am here as a retired, as my brother O'Hara said, of the United States Armed Forces. I put my life on the line for over 20 years to fight for foreigners that I did not know. And I am determined to fight like hell for my own children 
and the citizens of the United States of America. And I intend to do that because that's what I do. And I'm doing what I do right now because you have a right to know. Peace be unto you, and bye-bye we go. I'm George Boston Brains, a community concerned citizen. While down in Port St. Joe, Florida with President Lee Tushton of the Valdosta Lyons County Branch of the NAACP, I received a call. Yes, I received a call from the late Senator Robert Brown, the man who accompanied Representative Tyrone Brooks down to Brooks County in support of the equipment 10 plus 2, when no news media had a single good thing to say about the equipment 10 plus 2. They painted their faces all over the newspapers on TV with mug shots and their little jail uniforms. But thank God for those freedom fighters from the north that came down south. And the fight has been on ever since. And after Robert Brown's death, I had to give him a few words of condolences. And this is what I did. And I'm very proud of the work that this senator did in Brooks County. Listen and listen well. The news media ignored him down here in South Georgia, but thank God for the ghetto free press, at that time KVCI, which was keeping Valdosta citizens informed. We did it because we love you then, and we are doing it now because we still love you just as much as I did when I wore my uniform for 21 years in the United States Armed Forces and I serve this nation with pride. Now listen as I talk about the late Senator Robert Brown. Listen and listen well. I did it because he was worthy of such honor. Yes, the late Senator Robert Brown question the manner in which he died, but to this individual, what is more important to me is how he lived his life as a senator, as well as a candidate for mayor of Macon, Georgia. This will be a brief cut in honor of Senator Brown. To me, he was a hero. He should be aligned with Dr. Martin Luther King, Tyrone Brooks, Jesse L. Jackson, and others who traveled that great line of concern for his fellow human beings. Well, you may ask, Brother Ryans, how do you know Senator Brown? When the equipment 10 were arrested for alleged voter fraud, Senator Brown was instrumental in giving the equipment 10 and the citizens of Valdosta some relief along the lines of justice and media exposure, along with the examiner out of Macon, Georgia, Mr. David up there. When we journeyed to the Georgia Capitol with some of the equipment 10. Robert Brown or Senator Brown was there. We met, took pictures, <coughs> excuse me, took pictures <coughs> and dialogue <coughs> in the state capitol. We went to the floor of the General Assembly <coughs> and we listened in. Me some of the NAACP, president of the SCLC, Reverend Rose. But Senator Brown was the key force <coughs> to draw attention.
Georgia, when it happened here in Brooks County. It was Senator Brown who spearheaded and came to Quitman, Georgia, along with Tyrone Brooks, David Lucas, Helen Butler, and others, to try and put a face on poverty and election disenfranchisement of voters. But you don't know nothing about that because the South Georgia news media included the Quitman Free Press and the Valdosta Daily Times and all television stations made sure that nothing but nothing was reported. Senator Brown also was instrumental in having the Quitman 10 to go to Savannah. Big rally in Macon. Came back to Quitman with nearly 200 people. But all was a whiteout here in South Georgia because South Georgia don't have a news media that is sensitive to the black African American and the poor white citizens experience and problems. In my most humble opinion, and I'm available to be challenged even on national news, to see and examine what historical facts do I base that upon. CNN, MSNBC, none of those major news media networks came when we had civil rights heroes and sheroes to journey the equipment. In fact, we have had a whiteout of the GBI allegedly intimidating the citizens over in Brooks County. CNN didn't care. Nobody seems to care. But Senator Brown cared. And so regardless of how Senator Brown died. More importantly to me is how did he live? How did he live and what did he stand for? Did he respect freedom of speech, freedom of the press, and the right to vote? Did he stand for that? And if you ask the citizens in Brooks County, they will say yes. County story. Representative Tyrone Brooks, Representative David Lucas, and others gave a listening ear to what's going on throughout the South concerning black African Americans' right to vote, concerning the disrespect of the president, the 44th president of the United States of America. A new precedent has been set in the United States of America, and Senator Brown addressed that issue that no president in the history of this United States of America has received the negative comments and threats as President Barack Hussein Obama. He was not afraid, nor did he fuck out under pressure. And so I came today to stand before this flag of the United States of America, where we all, black and white and Christian and Muslims and Jews and others, have all gave their blood through sacrifice that this republic will still be standing. Senator Brown was disrespected here in Brooks County, disrespected in South Georgia in general, but he is and always will be in the archival record of South Georgia on Boston GBR, on kbci.blogspot.com. We will make sure that Senator Brown received the recognition that the South Georgia news media should have given him in the Serenity Museum.
as well as Valdosta Museum and the library in Quitman. We will work to see that done because he stood with the oppressed people at this dispensation. And now I want to close this note out to the family of Senator Brown. Our condolences go out to you. And we say to you, don't be ashamed. Hold your head up high. We don't know what was in that man's mind, but there's one thing we do know, because I have it on video. He talked about what was happening with the black faced people and that we still have a long ways to go. He addressed that concern publicly, but the South Georgia and CNN and other news media outlets, not only in Georgia, but across the nation, ignore the great words and the connectiveness he gave to the Quitman 10, the Quitman 10 that everybody seemed to be ignoring, including 60 Minutes, 48 Hours, and a host of others, they are ensuring that the White House continues. But there are some of us that will continue to fight until truth becomes a real reality in the United States of America. And so we close by saying to you, we do what we do because we love the United States of America. And when you love America, you will work to make America a better place to live and raise your children. This is kvci.blogspot.com saying to you, bye-bye, we gone. And to the family of the late Senator Robert Brown, thank you for coming to South Georgia when they tried to ignore us you were there. Thank you, Representative Tyrone Brooks, David Lucas, Helen Butler, Miss Ruffins, Reverend Joseph Lowry for sending your group to Valdosta. Bye-bye. We go. And so it was. And so it was. And yet, today marks the 12th day of the highly, highly disgraceful case against Miss Lula Smart and the equipment 10 plus 2 Sega continues. We must wait now and we'll see what God will do to relieve the pressure of these outstanding Brooks County citizens. They have done nothing wrong. The people who investigated them, they know the truth. And we who have been in the courtroom for these last 12 days, without any news media coverage, we see what the real deal was. And yet, it seems as if though a tree fell in the forest and the news media telling us that the tree never fell and that the forest does not exist simply because they never went into the forest to see the problems facing the black man, the black woman and their children sitting beneath the tree they witnessed the tree when it fell. They know the forest so well. But yet, the scribes of this dispensation across this nation will not report the truth. And so in the eyes of the world, they are looking at us and they are saying, free press what? Freedom of religion what? They are asking a question now. Don't get mad with America. Don't, don't get mad with her. Don't get mad with your neighbors. Don't get mad with different political parties. But just thank God. Praise God and be thankful for what's written in the volume of sacred law, uh, 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 volume of the sacred volume of sacred law. Remember that. Be thankful. Because the Bible said, 
there's nothing hidden that will not be revealed. And therefore, sooner or later, the entire world will look out into the field. And they'll say to America, and they will say to the nations of the world, you are not, let me repeat, you are not what and who you claim to be, but who you prove yourselves to be over a given period of time. And God has given America much time, if not too much time, to prove to the world, do you really mean freedom and justice for all? Are, are, are we really a nation of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all Americans? Do we really mean it when we say I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, not one political party, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty, with liberty, with liberty, with liberty and justice, justice, justice for all, not just for those who are in the clique and among the slicks and various legal fraternities. Well, the late Senator Brown saw something and he opened the door to a new reality. But the scribes, as they were in Jesus' day, they thought that they could keep truth from you because they know like Jesus knew. And ye shall know the truth, for the truth shall set and make you free. And because those who oft to see the wizard don't want you free, they want you to take a trip to see the wizard. But what they don't know is that as it was when Dorothy and those went to see the wizard, it was a little dog to pull the curtain down and all of it was exposed. America, America, America. <laughs> the lights will go out on you unless you change your ways. Bye bye. We go. How are you doing today? Very well. Good. What's your name? My name's Kevin Moran. Uh, Kevin Moran, where are you from? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm a member of Dr. Joseph E. Lowry's Coalition for the People's Agenda. I've been coming down here for the last four years, familiarizing myself with this case against these 11 women and one man of the very apparent injustice of this matter. This has been orchestrated from the highest levels of this state. The Secretary of State has a vendetta against these upstanding citizens and is trying to suppress the African American vote, not only here in Quitman and Brooks County, but across the entire southern band of counties in Georgia. The women of the Quitman 10 were very successful in using a strategy that the Republican Party has used very successfully, of using the absentee ballot to increase participation in the process. That's what we all want in this democracy is for participation in the process by informed voters. This has been successfully done repeatedly here in Brooks County. These women didn't win just one election. They didn't win just one primary. They have been re-elected and re-elected by large majorities in every case similar to the initial election. Today, 
at the end of the day on a Friday here in the courtroom. Yes, sir. After being here all week, our attorney, Attorney King, had the opportunity to cross-examine the star witness of the prosecution, Mr. Boone of the United States Post Office. Mr. Boone testified that he had collected the names of and written the names of individuals that mailed in an absentee ballot. This is in violation of his charge and his oath as an officer of the United States Postal Service. I don't want my postman going through my mail and recording who I'm getting mail from. I don't expect my mailman to be recording who I'm sending my Christmas cards to. This is a free country. This is the United States of America. We don't spy on each other in this country. But what he was doing doesn't hold up to the light of day. He presented a list that he swore to of 15 names that he swore put in post office collection box all at the same time. And he swore by one person. Well, very interestingly, on cross-examination, it was shown in black and white on the return envelope for absentee ballots that one was sent in with a date of July 5th, 2010, and one on a date of July 15th. He had previously testified that every ballot he paid in was immediately stamped that day by the local equipment post office and expeditiously delivered to the registrar voters here in the room, Brookstead. There were 10 days between the receipt of these two envelopes that he had sworn he recorded on the same day at the same time being deposited by the same person. As the defense attorney said, that is a lie. It was proven to the jury, the judge, and all in the courtroom. These postmarked return envelopes showed the dates of July 5 and July 10, respectively. Those aren't recorded on the same day. Beyond this, that opened a can of worms that the defense attorney has exposed that the prosecution does not have. Of those 15 ballots, they have but two of the originals. The other 12 are missing. They are unable to produce them. They brought out all the materials they contend that the prosecution has. Put the boxes out, let the defense attorneys go through them. That's all we have, and these documents are not in there. The original documents that he is making this, these salacious charges on are non-existent. The chief case agent of the GBI testified that she picked up many, many boxes from the election office here in Brooks Ms. County. Ms. Braswell. That is correct. Ms. Braswell testified. She also testified as an agent of the GBI that she turned over every bit, all of that material to the prosecution. All that's remaining today are what look to me like three, four small boxes of some evidence, some pieces of paper. The prosecution, the prosecutor is even admitting 
but they probably won't be able to find the original. The judge has ordered them to produce the original by the convening of court, in this case, the next day on Tuesday. It is highly unlikely after all this. They have looked before. They will not find originals. They know they are not producible. Why do originals that are being used to tarnish the reputation and exposed to convictions of innocent people, why does that evidence suddenly totally disappear? And beyond that, the list that the registrar would have of individuals applying for these absentee ballots has disappeared. There is no record that these individuals, who the postal employee claims all mailed in their ballot on the same day, came in in the same stack at the identical time, they never show on the records of having received a ballot. The ballots are dated by the post office itself 10 days apart. This is a miscarriage of justice in the state of Georgia that cannot be overlooked. The Secretary of State and the Governor have made it very purposeful that they will send the message that if you are African American and if you run for office, and if you honestly win the election, you will be punished. The governor the secretary of state are trying to intimidate and suppress the African-American vote since they know if the 400,000 registered African-Americans in the state of Georgia that did not vote in the last election cycle come out and exercise a right that people have died for, a right to vote. If the African American community and all people of color exercise their constitutional right to vote, it will mean the de demise of this white privileged aristocracy here in Georgia that is not American, that is not worthy of the state of Georgia. This prosecution is a travesty. The prosecutors, the Secretary of State, the governor should be called out on what they have done to these women and called to publicly apologize for the four years that they have put them under this scrutiny and this character assassination. So that's how I feel about today. Thank you very much. This is the Ghetto Free Press. Just keeping it real. Once again, I want to appreciate you. Uh, you are a prime example, in my most humble opinion, why we cannot hate one another because of the skin color. It's not about skin color. It's about what is right and wrong. I think perhaps that Jesus put it best, and I put it in my own words, want for your neighbor that which you want and have for yourself and your own children. Thank you so very much. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Thank you. Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press, and I'm George Foster Ryans. And uh, what's your name once again, my beautiful brother? George, my name is Kevin Moran. All right. And you're with the People's Agenda. I'm with uh, the Coalition of the People's Agenda, convened by Dr. Joyce E. Lowry. All right. I want to ask you a few questions. Number one. I've been here, I missed Monday because I was up there with the newly elected black uh, mayor, uh, Mayor, mayor Ann Whippaloo, who's been mistreated, and I believe it all inter interrelated together. Yes. But I got here Tuesday, and I didn't see any news media here Tuesday, I didn't see any Wednesday, I didn't see any Thursday, and I didn't see any today. I didn't even see any of the news reporters. I haven't seen anything in the Valdosta Daily Times, a metropolitan city. I only saw a little snippet, snippet in the Equipment Free Press 
yesterday when I got that in my mailbox because I subscribed to the paper. But the question is, how do you think that the news media like CNN, MSNBC, even with Al Sharpton, can e ignore or omit what is happening here in Brooks County where he ha we had hundreds of people to march here because this is a very, very high profile case. How do you, why do you think that the news media are not concerned about voting rights down here in South Georgia? Apparently because they're not here. The mass media that you refer to is totally owned and operated by the white aristocracy in Georgia. And it is an inconvenient truth that equipment 10 plus 12 have been salaciously charged. 10 plus 2. 10 plus 2 with charges for crimes they did not commit, and it was proven today in court. Okay. Um, another thing I want to ask you is that if you had not spoken out a little bit about what happened here today, I say that this information that took place in the courtroom outside of the transcript, which will be a, a matter of record for, for, for all eternity, I guess, but without that, the local citizens here in Quitman and Brooks County and all around South Georgia, they wouldn't know anything about it because when the newspapers are written, which I call the archival record, when they read that in 30, 40 years in the schools, the, the schools require these students to do turn papers on the events of yesterday, they won't be able to retrieve that from the newspaper because it wasn't there. Yes. What do you think about that? I think that's why it is essential that this word get out. I've been fortunate four years ago when you mentioned hundreds of us scattered here on the steps to be traveling with an international representative of the uh, Mennonite Church. Uh, who I contacted last night, that this trial is still going on. Uh, he has learned the truth. And he is ashamed that the United States judicial system here in Quitman, Georgia, is lynching these 10 plus 2 for acts they never committed and by the media intentionally I really believe it is intentionally not being here yes sir it is an inconvenient truth what has been done here for four years these women and one man have been subjected to daily harangues allegations by the GBI put in jail because they won an election. They won an election to office that had previously been held by white males. And for the first time, we had African Americans of impeccable character and wonderful qualifications as educators elected to the school board. They've been elected two times since by the same plurality. This was not a fluke. This was not a manipulated election. This, unfortunately, for some, is the south of the future. Georgia will become a majority state of colored people. Our brothers and sisters in Christ will be represented. This is a democracy in the United States. We have fought for it. We are entitled to our rights of equality under the law. We haven't seen that here. And the media doesn't want to be telling that story because governors, heads of the GBI, secretaries of state, will be criticizing them and exerting, again, power on them. We're playing with some, we're playing with some players that have great power and great audacity to use it. 
We need to stand up to them. We need to tell the truth. The truth needs to be told. And George, you are telling the truth. You are the only member of the press here today. And it's a privilege to have you here and documenting the truth. I thank you very much. And uh, I'm not going to because of the flavor of my nature and what I call the nature of my flavor. I am not going to allow you to stand there without, by yourself. I'm going to come and shake your hand because no man in this struggle should have to stand alone. So wherever you go, I'm with you. And I'll declare before God and man that right does not have a skin coat. I love you, my beautiful brother. I love you. And I love the flavor of your nature. The president of SCLC, Reverend Dr. Stewart uh, uh, will be here on Tuesday. Uh, I spoke with the President of the Georgia NAACP this afternoon. Francis Johnson is sending out a notification to all the NAACP members to be here all. That is power. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. God all bless you, my dear. Thank you so much. Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press. I'm George Foster Ryans, and I do what I do because I serve this nation for 21 years. This is my hometown. My grandmother told me the history of this place, Brooks County. And I love Brooks County, but I love justice and equality for all men, and women, and their children, regardless of whether they're Germans, Russians, Jews, or, what, or Palestinians. We are all in this struggle together, trying to build a better world. And if our forebears yesterday gave their life for us to get where we are today, then if some, some more of us may have to sacrifice and go to an invisible cross. But in the end, I will assure you that truth, right, and justice will win in the end. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you. Thank you. How can you do me wrong? When I'm doing you right, baby, when I'm doing you right, yeah, I bought you a car, house, and a diamond ring, and you're acting less, I haven't done a thing, I want to know how, can you do me wrong, when I'm doing you right, tell me baby, I want to know how, oh, I want to know how, can you do me wrong, oh, baby, baby, when I'm doing you right, oh, yeah, when I'm doing you right.